All right, let's go over the Excel introduction activity. This activity you're going to do with me, and you're going to need to open up your OneDrive. So you'll go to onedrive.live.com and be sure you've got your drive open. Um, you should have all your computer apps folders in there. And if you have not made one for Excel and Excel One yet, you're going to want to make one so that you can put this file in there. And then on our page in the module, you'll click on this link which should open this up. Again, make sure you're logged into your OneDrive. It should open this up in Excel Online. So this is the online version of Excel. And we can do some of the first couple chapters of Excel mostly on the online version. Um, when we get to the fourth chapter, you can't, but in the first couple, there are some things that you can and can't do. Um, but you can always at least get started on things. So. Everything that we're going to do here today, we'll start off um, in the first part, we'll be in the online version, then we'll switch to the desktop version. Um, in the event you had to work on it at home, you know, do as much as you can do and just skip the things that you can't do in the online version if you are working, you know, for quarantine or whatever. Um, but then you can always do the other part when you come back to school. Okay. All right. So here we are. Now you're going to have to save a copy to your file folder because you're not going to be able to use mine. So when you click Save As, when you go to File and Save As, you won't have the option to save as, but you should have the option to download a copy. So what you're going to do is download a copy, and you're going to put it in your OneDrive, and you're going to put it in your Excel folder. So go ahead and pop it in there. And go ahead and put your initials on there um, for now, just so you know it's yours. Um, and then we'll save it as something else once we get it opened in the online version of Excel. Okay, now, we don't want to use my, mine anymore, so we're going to get out of this, because yours probably has my name. Click on the little squares, and that should open up your OneDrive, and you can close that Excel file. And then in here, hopefully, you have the opportunity to open the new version, which has your initials on it. Okay, and you may have to do a little bit of refreshing, because it may not be there just right off the bat. Usually it takes a little time for it to sync up. Um, you can always kind of double check if you go to show in a folder on the computer. Now, if you're on your Chromebook, it would um, go onto your Google Drive, and then you would have to go put it in here. So, um, But here it is on mine, my Excel One Snacks TS. And um, then I'm going to open that one up. It says that it's um, here, so it may not be synced yet. Um, See if we can view it online. All right, there we go. So now it's going to open up online. So you can right click it and view online like I've done, and it should open up. And this is your version here, the one that's yours. Okay. All right, now once we're in here, let's go ahead and save as. So click on file and save as, just like you would on your normal computer. And we're going to give it one more new name because now we have a save as, and we should be saving to your Excel One folder. And let's call it Excel One Snacks underscore in your name. And again, make sure it's in your Excel One folder and save. Now, we're working in the cloud right now, so we're actually online um, in your OneDrive. Okay, um, first thing we want to do is we are not in the top cell A1, so we're going to press Control Home, like we would in Word, to return to the top of the document. And we're going to rename this worksheet. So when it comes in, initially the first worksheet is going to be called Sheet 1, not the most creative name. So we're going to double click. In the desktop version, when you double click, it just changes it right there in place. On the online version, it opens it up in a little window here. We're going to call it Snacks. And now you'll notice this is saved as Snacks. We can add files down or add worksheets down here to our workbook. We can also right click and duplicate these. We can delete them. We can insert them. Lots of different options here. Okay. What we're going to do now is we are going to go down to instruction four, insert your first name in cell A50. Now you can just scroll down to A50, but you can also use the name box right here. And you can just type in A50 and hit enter, and it'll jump you down there. And A50 is a yellow cell. Let's go ahead and type in your name. Now remember that these little guys on the left that go across when we highlight, those are rows. Rows are always numbered. And columns are in letters. Those are the vertical tall ones that go up and down. Again, remember that name box will tell you where you're at. So like I'm in D40 right now. Or if I type in a cell reference, and that means a column and row number together. That's a cell reference. If I type a cell reference and hit enter in the name box, it will take me to that cell. 
Okay, we're going to go back up to the beginning here. So I'm going to control home again to return back to the top. We're going to change the font size of the title that is in A2. A2. So right here, we are going to change that to 24 points. And we know how to do that already from doing it in Word. And we're going to change the font color, which is also the same as Word, to blue gray text 2. Blue gray text 2. There we go. It's the fourth box. Okay, at this point, we are ready to make a little change if we scroll down just a little bit to this funny little cell B20. Notice that we have some small print words and they go all the way across. Well, when you type in a cell in Excel, it just keeps going all the way across, which is okay as long as it doesn't run into other text or other data. Um, unfortunately for this one, we want it to all fit in this one cell. And in order to fit in a cell, you have to utilize word wrap. Now, if you're on a bigger screen, you're going to see the word word wrap right here, um, or wrap text rather. Let's see if I can get it to show. I'm on a laptop right now, so I can't really get it to be smaller um, or bigger. But it's this little button here, wrap text, and you're going to click on it. And then automatically it wraps that text and it makes that row taller to accommodate for all of that text. All right, now one thing to mention right now when we press tab in Excel, it just moves from uh, cell to cell to cell to cell across. And then after you've pressed tab and you hit enter, it jumps back over to wherever you started with on the desktop version. And on this version, it just goes straight down. Anytime you press enter, you're going to go down. If you use your arrow keys, you'll go up and down. But enter will enter data into a cell and go down. Tab is how we get from one cell to the next. And you can hold shift and tab to back up. Or, of course, you can use your arrow key. All right, now we're going to set the width of column A. When you come up to the column, you can click the column to select the entire column. You can set the width by dragging the line between the A and B part of the column. Notice you'll see that. When it says, like, the default size or... Um, if it says characters, it's talking about that first number you see. Or if it says pixels, that's the number in parentheses. We don't ever really pay attention to pixels on this. Okay. You can come up here to format and do column width this way. And it brings up a box. So if I'm making it five, I can just type a five in the box and hit OK. Um, or I could right click this column and do that exact same thing. Column width right here. And that's basically it. Okay. Simple enough. Next instruction number eight, add borders around all of the cells in B5 to E16. So whenever you see in instructions something that's separated by a colon like this, B5 colon E16, that's called a cell range. So for instance, I'm going to hit escape and that'll make that go away. Right here, I'm in cell H16. And if I click and drag and highlight here, I am dragging across the range A16, top left corner, colon I21. That's the bottom right corner. And that's what a range is like. Now, arranges are always, ranges are always going to be like next to each other. You can select what we call adjacent, non-adjacent, rather, ranges, which means they're not connected to each other. And you do that by holding down the control key and then selecting the additional ranges. So we can select adjacent ranges by just clicking and dragging across. Or if we need to skip something, we would do the first one, hold control, and do the second. Okay, now the instruction that we have here is going to be to select B5 to E16. So I'm going to come up here. B5 is this empty cell. I'm going to select B5. To E16. So my corner is going to be E16. Oops, went too far. There we go. Okay, B5 to E16. And then we're going to add borders around this. Um, just simply press your borders button like you would in Word. And then all borders is this one here that looks like a window. Let's give that a click. All right, good. Now we've got the first one here. So that takes care of our snack foods worksheet. Now we're going to create an additional worksheet. Number nine, add a new worksheet and rename it to be holidays. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here. That creates a new sheet. I call it sheet one. I'm going to double click it and name it holidays. Now we're going to return back over to the first worksheet where I'm hitting some data for you so you don't have to type it. 
And we're going to go down to A100. You can scroll down or I'm going to just type it in and hit enter. All right, so now I'm down here where A100 is. And we are going to select the information A100 to B104. That's this. Now I want you to notice something. Do you see those hashtags hanging out? The hashtags just mean that that column is too narrow to display that number. Now those are actually dates, but dates are considered numbers. Up here in this little section where it says numbers, all these different things are considered numbers. Times, dates, money, and actual numbers are considered numbers. So since our stuff in this adjacent cell, if this number can't fit, it just shows hashtags. If there were words in here, they would just cut off and you wouldn't see the additional words, okay? All right, now I've got this, we're going to cut it. Notice that in Excel, it's weird. It does this little like glowy thing whenever we cut. Now we're going to return back to A3 in holidays. I'm gonna come to A3 and I'm just going to hit the paste button. That's gonna paste it straight up in there. Next instruction 11, auto fit both columns. So I'm going to double click here to the right of that. That makes it fit those. And I'm going to double click here to make it fit the data in the column B. Instead of dragging those, we're using the auto fit command, okay? Now we're gonna change these dates from this format up here in the number group on the home tab to the short date format. We click on that. It should put hashtags in, but then it should size out our column A to fit. And there we go. Now we've got our data in there. All right, in number 12 says in cell A1, we're gonna click up here in cell A1. We're gonna enter the word fun holidays. And then you're gonna press enter and that's gonna take it down to the next column. I'm gonna take my arrow key and point back up to the first one. And it says to change the font to Arial Black. So we already know how to change our fonts. And we're gonna make this size 20. So go to size 20. It'll automatically resize your row to fit your font and it does automatically do that. 13 says add column labels above the data. Date here and holiday. Oops, probably helps if I spell it correctly. Notice that if you go try to type over something, it replaces everything. So when I typed that wrong and I started typing again, it replaces it. If you wanted to edit it, you can come up to the formula bar up here at the top and you can click in there and you can fix your mistakes that way. You can also double click in your cell and then click somewhere in there. But if you just start typing, you're gonna type over the whole thing. All right, number 14 says insert a row above Independence Day. So whatever row you want it to be above, that's the row you're gonna highlight. So I'm gonna click on this row five. And you can do this lots of ways. You can come over here to the cells group and you can insert sheet rows. Um, I believe you can also go to the insert tab here. Um, well, maybe not on this one. Um, and then you can right click. I usually just right click and insert rows. Okay, so then we've got that in there. We're going to add March 17, March 1, 7. And I'm gonna hit tab and automatically it will update that date in a St. Patrick's Day. Oops, look, I messed up. I'm gonna come up and click on this cell and then click in the formula bar and backspace my error and hit enter to it. All right, 15 says insert a row to add June 19 as Juneteenth. That's gonna go above Independence Day. So I'm gonna click on row six, right click the row and go to insert rows. The next one is going to be typing that in. June 19, notice we don't have to type it in that other format. It's automatically gonna adjust because we already formatted it. And then type in your data. All right, so we've got that number data in there. Next, we're gonna insert a column between column A and B. So right now we have column A, we have column B. We want to add in a column. So it's kind of like the rows. It adds before because if I'm on row four and insert a row, it adds it above it. So same thing here. If I want to add one in between, I'm going to select column B. Same thing as before. I can come up here and insert sheet columns or I could right click to insert that column either way. Next instruction is we're going to add the label rating here. And then you're simply going to enter a rating of how you feel about each of these holidays. So on a scale of one to five, do you like the holidays? Now notice I'm typing in numbers, but when I hit down or enter, it's kind of doing a thing, right? 
uh, it's putting them in date format, which is maybe not the best thing because we can't tell what I just typed in here. So anytime something like that happens, it just means we need to change that number format. So I'm going to select this range and come back up here to number format. And instead of setting it on date, I'm just going to change this either back to general, which means it just kind of looks at the data and decides, or I could set it to actual number. The problem with number is it usually adds decimal points. So then I would have to get rid of decimal points. So I'm just going to set mine on general. All right, good. So we've got number 16 done. And now we are going to create an additional worksheet. So we'll come down to our plus sign once again. This one we're going to call hi, H-I, and press enter to accept that name. And then we're ready to enter our data in here. We're actually going to do something kind of fun in this one. We're going to shade and make a word just by using shading in the cells. So we're going to start in B2, and we're going to select non-adjacent ranges. That means they're not connected. So we're going to have to select the first one, hold Control, and select the non-adjacent ranges. So B2 to B14, like so. Then I can let go of my mouse, but I'm going to hold down Control, and then choose D2 to D14. Okay, and then while I'm holding Control still, F2 to F14. So we're like making the word high. We still have to put the crossbar in there. And I don't care what color you want to make it. So choose any shading color that you like. Next, we're going to shade C8 right here to create the little crossbar. So just go ahead and click on that cell and click your shading. And now you have your beautifully shaded word. All right, in cell A1, let's click and type in your first and last name. And notice how it goes over there into column B. If I were to type something here, I'll type hello, notice it would cut off my name. I'm going to click back in there and press delete. But I just wanted you to see what happens whenever you have text running into other text. We are going to go ahead and auto fit A1. So recall that you're going to click between the A and the B column right there on the line. Double click. And that's how we auto fit. All right. At this point, we're going to insert two columns to the left of column D. So we're gonna click on column D and we're gonna insert twice. So insert a sheet column and then insert a sheet column. So now we have a really wide crossbar going on. So something else that you can do is you can hide columns. So we're gonna hide column D. You just select that column, right click it and choose to hide the column. So now notice that our, our letters do not go in order anymore. I mean, they do, but I skip one. A, B, C, E, F. So D is still there. We just can't see it. Now I'm going to show you how to unhide it. And it's not as you would think. You might just think, oh, I'll just right click here and unhide. But when I do that, nothing happens. You have to select the area that the hidden column belongs in. So I'm selecting C and E. And then I can right click and unhide and D would come back. But we don't want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and undo so that my D stays hidden. All right, next we're going to um, hide this entire sheet. So I'm going to right click because you can also hide sheets and choose to hide the sheet. Now, if we wanted it back, notice there's nothing to right click to bring it back. To bring back a hidden sheet, you would right click on a sheet that exists. You'd go to unhide, and then it would show you all of the hidden sheets. But I'm going to hit cancel. All right, that's the end of part one of this video. We will be picking up on part two, but we're going to open this up in the desktop version of Excel to continue. So it will automatically save. It should say saved at the top. So you should already have this saved. If you go back to your OneDrive, which you should hopefully have open in another uh, tab, and you hit refresh, you should see it in there. And of course, mine was already in there. You could see it, and it said it was just saved a few seconds ago or a minute ago. But you want to verify that that is indeed there. And then we're ready to get out of this version. And we're going to go open this up in our regular Excel from our OneDrive in Windows. So join me back for part two.